Excellent. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, my name is Lindsay Smith, and I'm the food educator for the Hanover Consumer Cooperative Society, or as it's locally known, the co-op. Um, and I'm really excited to be bringing this free series to uh, CATV this summer um, and uh, with what I think are some just really essential back pocket recipes. And today we're gonna to be talking about salad dressings. Um, I love this class. I love learning how to make my own salad dressings because it's probably one of the easiest things you can do to kind of move away from some of the shelf ready products. Um, there's some really good shelf ready products out there and I do, um, I do eat them every once in a while, but this is an easy way to make your own. And once you start making your own, they taste so much different. They just don't have all of those shelf stabilizers. They don't have all of the um, other products in them that, you know, so that they can sit on a shelf for a really long time. And it's super easy to do. So that's why I, I wanted to start with this. Um, I'm not gonna be handing out the recipes, but you will be able to, I'm gonna try and go slow enough that you can take notes. And um, because this is a free class, um, I'm, I'm cutting down on the amount of work I have to do. But, um, and, and this again will be available for, for um, streaming at any time on CATV's website. And I will have to look up that web address again really quickly, I'm sorry. But we're gonna start with the basic vinaigrette, okay? And um, with a vinaigrette, it's oil and vinegar, right? We start there. Now, a typical vinaigrette, um, a, a typical vinaigrette ratio is one part vinegar to three parts oil. So it's usually a three to one ratio. Now, when you make it yourself, you can make it however you want, which is the other reason I love to make my own salad dressings. I like things a little bit more tart and a little less oily. Um, and so my vinaigrettes often are probably more of a one to two ratio. Um, and often I, and I don't really measure anything <laughs> because that's where, that's, that's learning how to cook. So the other thing I like to do with vinaigrettes is I like to make them in jars. Um, and so, because then they, and I have lots of little jars at home. I have all sorts of vinaigrettes that I've made. Um, and it makes it really easy just to keep them. Um, or if you're just making vinaigrette for that evening, I have, you know, I have a little bowl. I found this at a farmer or a, a yard sale. I love it. Um, and this is sort of my salad dressing bowl. It's a ceramic bowl. It's got a little pour spout. So um, you know, find something that you like to use and make that your, your salad dressing, um, just your bowl or, or, uh, tool. And, and then you'll, you'll kind of, you'll bond with it a little bit more. Alice Waters talks about the, using the tools of the, the tools of the kitchen. They need to bring you joy. Um, and then it makes everything much more pleasurable, right? So I like really, um, earthen and natural materials and, um, and then it just kind of, I feel more connected. So I have this little bowl, um, before I, before I jump into making a vinaigrette, the, the other reason a, a vinaigrette's really nice is that you can customize it towards whatever your meal is, because there's all sorts of vinegars out there. There's more than just balsamic vinegar and red wine vinegar, and there's all sorts of oils that you can use. So you don't have to just use extra virgin olive oil. Um, so play with flavor combinations. There's lots of fun ones, and I, do, I can't really zoom in, but I pulled out of my cupboard here, just right here in this area, all these different vinegars. Um, so there's apple cider vinegar. I have an apple balsamic, um, organic white wine vinegar, raspberry vinaigrette. I love it's fruity. It's really nice in the summer. Um, red wine vinegar. One of my favorites. Oh, everybody knows about um, balsamic vinegar. I'm actually not a huge fan of balsamic vinegar myself. Uh, I worked in too many restaurants, um, but I love white balsamic vinegar. This is much more mellow. It's really 
Um, it's just a really nice vinegar. I don't know if you can see that label, Bianco. Um, and you know, it, it lasts a good long time because you're only using one to three or one to two. If you're making a more Asian inspired dish, maybe a, a, a slaw and, it's, and you want it to be a little bit more Asian inspired, you've got cabbage and carrot and sesame seeds. Maybe you use some rice vinegar. Um, actually rice vinegar shows up a lot of times. Um, it's a lot of times a chef's secret ingredients because it's a little bit more neutral, um, almost like a white vinegar. You know, I don't often use white vinegar because I clean with white vinegar. Um, I, and I save it for pickles. Here's a vinegar that I made by stuffing a whole lot of herbs into a jar and actually pouring um, maybe white vinegar or apple cider vinegar over top. So this particular vinegar, if I can get the lid off, is very herbaceous. And I don't even know what all's in here. Um, so I should probably strain it by now. <laughs> but you can, you can use any of these um, sherry vinegar. So this is, you know, definitely a little bit more um, earthy, uh, really good with mushrooms and bacon. And, and, you know, I kind of, I go in that direction. So if I'm making a, a bacon vinegar or I have a salad that I've got a lot of mushrooms in, a sherry vinegar might be nicer. Have a, you should have in your pantry a, a good range of different vinegars and give them a try. Um, there's all sorts of other ones out there. There's some champagne ones. We've got some other lovely ones in. If you don't want to use vinegar and you just, but you need acid, you can always just use lemon or lime juice. Uh, I also always keep a bottle of organic just lemon juice or lime. Lime is a really nice, surprising flavor sometimes. Like if I'm doing, a, I need a dressing, like a, a honey lime dressing for a fruit salad or like a Waldorf salad, um, you know, and, and I like lime sometimes instead of lemon, just because it's a slightly different flavor profile. So keeping, you know, it doesn't always have to be vinegar, but you want an acid. So we have an, one part acid, two parts oil, or three parts oil. Um, oils, extra virgin olive oil, toasted sesame oil. Everybody's really into avocado oil right now. Um, you can use walnut oil, make sure nobody has a nut allergy. Um, there's a lot of different ones out there. And so you can have a lot of fun playing like raspberry vinegar and walnut oil. They might go together really nicely. Um, or one of the apple cider vinegars and a walnut oil. Um, might go together really nicely. So how do we make a vinaigrette? Well, um, it's always good to have a little bit of shallot in there. Um, and so I have a shallot. I'm going to switch to my cutting board camera. And this is a very large shallot. Um, this is a very large shallot. So I'm not going to use the whole thing. I need about a tablespoon of shallot. It also is a little soft in places. So I know some of it's not in any good, but you want to cut away any of the like dried parts. You can see there's like multiple shallots to it. So I'm just going to cut off a small chunk. That's going to give me more than enough. And when you use something like a shallot, you want to macerate it. I'm going to take off any skin here that looks like it might be dried. So first I want to just, um, I'm going to just, um, mince up a little bit so it's really nice and small shallots have a lot of they can have a lot of sting to them if you don't have a shallot you could use some green onion or maybe some um even red onion but you want to macerate it for just a little tiny bit of time and what it macerating is it's um soaking it it's pulling the liquid out it actually pulls the sting out of the shallot we often think about macerating strawberries in sugar. Um, and that's, we're pulling the liquid out of the sugar or out of the strawberries with sugar. You also, you can macerate shallots. And this is quite a bit here. I may not use all of that. I'm not making a lot. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right in my jar. Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna get, and this is a very large jar for just a little tiny bit of dressing, but I'm gonna get a vinegar. And I think 
I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I have an herb, um, I'm going to do an herb thing today. Actually, no, I'll wait with that one. <laughs> I lied. I am going to use, I'm going to use my raspberry. I've got just a little bit left. So I'm going to just pour in, I'm going to eyeball kind of, I'm just doing kind of one part vinegar. So this is it. The, this is the last of this. So it's kind of um, a little murky. Great. And then if you can, you want to let the shallot sit in your vinegar for, you know, a few minutes. Um, if you have, if you've got 20, that's great. We don't have 20 today, but that'll really help to pull the sting out of those shallots. So this is macerating. And then, um, you can just simply add oil. Now, you know, if you add, if you just add your oil to this, every time you shake it, those oil and vinegars are going to separate really fast. Okay. They do not like to mix. That's why in restaurants, they give you the oil bottle and the vinegar bottle, and you can just mix them right over your salad, which I do a lot. A lot of times I make a bowl of salad and I just drizzle oil over it and I squeeze whatever acid I'm going to use and I just toss everything. It's the simplest way. Um, but for making a dressing, I'm going to um, go ahead and I'm going to... We're gonna pretend it's been a little bit longer. I might add a pinch of salt. You always want to salt. So I'm just adding a small pinch here. That's like maybe that's less than an eighth of a teaspoon, that little pinch. And then because I want my, my um, I'm gonna want my, my dressing to hold together, I wanna add an emulsifier. And an emulsifier is, will create a suspension and it will hold the vinegar and the oil together in suspension. Not forever, um, it, especially in a salad dressing, it will break eventually, but all you have to do is mix it back up. And the most classic emulsifiers are Dijon, vin or Dijon mustard is a classic emulsifier um, or any type of mustard you can use, mayonnaise, is often a good emulsifier. And um, molasses is another good one. Now, if you're thinking molasses, you can also kind of go into um, maybe a little maple syrup, or I have another, uh, um, I love a molasses. I'm making all of this up. I didn't, I didn't prepare this recipe and I'm gonna use one of my favorite molasses, molassi maybe. <laughs> which is pomegranate molasses. This has got this beautiful like tart flavor. So I already have some, I already have some berry going on with the raspberry vinegar um, and it smells very raspberry. Um, I'm gonna add some um, pomegranate molasses and this is actually found, if, can you see that label? Um, it's found over next with all the rest of the molasses, molasses. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, pomegranate molasses. Just a, I don't know. We'll start there. And again, I'll just show you that label up really close. I love this stuff. Love it. Um, it's just, if you like pomegranates. Now I have um, a very small whisk. I keep a collection of small whisks. And even though I can shake this jar, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a nice little whisk here. Get that in there. And then I'm gonna add my oil and I'm gonna just use regular olive oil or extra virgin olive oil for this particular one. I've got lots of flavor going on with these uh, um, vinegars and the molasses. So I'm just gonna mix in. Again, I don't like my dressing to be super oily. So if you want to, you can really um, measure it for yourself or you can, you can measure. So it's like start with, um, if you want to write this down, I would say you would want, um, let me give you about a tablespoon of vinegar, three tablespoons of oil and about Maybe a, um, let me look really quickly, about half a teaspoon of emulsifier, okay? 
and then um, a teaspoon and a half of um, shallot. So start with that basic recipe. That's sort of your foolproof vinaigrette. So your your a tablespoon of vinegar, any flavor, um, a teaspoon and a half of a little bit of shallot, and then just scale up as you need to, right? Um, a, uh, a half a teaspoon or so of emulsifier. Um, so maybe Dijon vinaigrette or Dijon. So I always keep saying Dijon vinaigrette, right? It rolls off the tongue. Um, and again, in a jar like this, you can just shake it. It's really easy. And then you can put this if you have a, and I like to save little, little small ones from, um, I don't know, things I buy off of the shelf. Um, and then I've got cute little jars and you can just serve this right at your table and let people apply it themselves. Um, and if you can see here, it's really hard. It's not the best of coloring, but the oil and vinegar is being held together. It's not separating, com oops, separating completely. I can't really quite hold it at the right angle, um, but you can see it's being held together. So um, I have in my refrigerator. So actually here's a, a um, I have no idea what's in this particular <laughs> dressing. I make lots of dressings, but I'll show you this layer. So I, I do store them in the, in the refrigerator. And um, so this top layer that's yellow, that is your oil. So this is olive oil. It does um, turn hard at colder temperatures. It's, it's liquid at room temperature. Here I've got a layer of herbs. And then down here at the bottom, I've got my shallots in whatever vinegar I have here. I'll put this out right now. It's the time is 1220 and in about five minutes, this will have softened up a little bit. If you need to, you can always like stick it in the microwave for 15 seconds and that oil will have, uh, will ha um, have come to temperature and it will liquefy again. And then you have your vinaigrette. So, but really this is the, this is the super easiest way. So again, I'll, I, uh, I'll, I'll try to do that recipe again, one more time one tablespoon of vinegar or acid, what, three to, uh, one and a half teaspoons of shallot minced, um, half a teaspoon or so of your emulsifier, pinch of salt. You can also add in pepper or any other spices that you want, any herbs if you want. Um, and then three tablespoons of, um, yeah, garlic would be great. Garlic is really good. I'm sure there's some garlic in here. Um, and then three tablespoons of, um, of your oil of choice. Um, okay. So garlic is, is optional again. Um, and I'm going to, we're going to use garlic in the next couple ones, but that is your basic vinaigrette. And again, you just, all you need is a little bit. This is going to, this will do several salads for me, right? It's super easy, just a couple of minutes. And then there's no shelf stabilizers. There's no extra, extra weird, funky things. And you can change it up to match whatever it is that you are cooking um, and match the flavors in there. You know, if I've got tomatoes, I might want to put some thyme in there or some tarragon, whatever is looking beautiful and fresh in your herb garden, which is going to lead me right into my next favorite back pocket dressing. And again, I have this, so I'm gonna, this is sort of my base creamy dressing. Now I love a ranch dressing. Um, I was raised in the nineties. <laughs> And I love a ranch dressing, but actually I can't stand most of the ones that are, that are available today. I just don't like the flavor. They just taste really sort of, I don't know. They taste really, um, medicinal maybe. Um, I can just, I can just taste all the, the shelf products. So what I love to do, and especially right now, um, when I have a lot of extra greens or, um, just going out to the herb garden um, is that I make a my own sort of ranch. I just do an herb creamy dressing, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I've got a, um, I'm gonna use a blender for this one. And again, you can use a smaller one if you're like those little hand ones, this works perfectly fine. And I have um, in my blender, let's move these things to the side. 
Um, so in that, and here I have a whole big bunch of herbs and different things. Go to this camera, if you'll see it a little bit closer. So I have some cilantro. Um, yeah, this up just a little bit. So in this, I've got cilantro. I have parsley. Um, this is some arugula. Like I always seem to have arugula in my refrigerator because I love it. It's really peppery. So this is peppery. Cilantro is peppery. Here I have some oregano. Um, I have more shallot if I need it. I've got some green onions if I wanted. So what I'm going to do to make this um, just herb creamy dressing, I'm going to get my container here. And I'm going to just, so I've got some extra shallot, right? Don't want to waste that. So I'm just going to throw that in. In fact, I'll just throw in all of this that's out. Definitely going to throw in some garlic on this one. And I like these peeled cloves of garlic. I'm going to throw in some extra garlic. Um, don't buy, uh, if you can, if you can avoid it, the, the garlic that's already minced and in olive oil, um, isn't, it's just not a really good product. It's been cooked. The, uh, it's not fresh. Um, it's taken away any medicinal pro uh, properties of the garlic. Um, so I hate peeling garlic, so that's why I always buy these cloves that are peeled. Unless I'm getting it on my garden, and then I'll peel the, that garlic. So I'm throwing some garlic in here. And um, I might be able to back this picture up here. Point of view. Here we go. Maybe I can get a little bit of a... Oops, that's closer. There we go. All right. So, um, and then I'm going to take in, I'm going to put in some arugula because I have it. This is like one of those, like, what do you have? And I'm going to take, I'm going to put some oregano. So oregano, I don't want that stock. This is nice, fresh oregano. So I'm just going to pull the leaves off. Um, I don't want too much. Again, these are, a lot of these are really, um, have a lot of spice to them. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of oregano. Oh, it just smells wonderful. I'll do a little bit more. Ta-da! Okay. Oops, I a little bit extra right. Now I love parsley, and we have some beautiful parsley right now. Some local. You can pull the leaves off if you want. You can also parsley stems are edible. Um, and in this dressing, they, they're great to put in this dressing because we're putting it into a blender. So everything's going to get blended up. So I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time um, picking all the parsley leaves. Um, and I might add in a little bit, oops, that's more parsley. Might add in a little bit of cilantro. Or the, I have all that peppery arugula. So um, I usually always have one or the other. So look at all these herbs that I have in there. Beautiful. Now to make it creamy, I like to, and again, I use what I keep on hand. So in my refrigerator, I always have a Greek yogurt or actually I prefer Lebne and it's L-E-B-N-E. -E. This is, they've now, um, Cedars, if you are familiar with them, they make um, some different tabulis and hummus. They have now started to make a Lebna product. This is a, um, uh, what do they call it? A creamy yogurt spread. It's super thick and creamy. Um, I use it instead of sour cream. Um, we also have a different Lebna product over in our specialty cheese shop. So um, we couldn't get that in for a while. So I've got the cedars. So I use this as my base and you'll see how thick and creamy this is. I mean, so I'm gonna just put in, I'm gonna do two nice big spoonfuls of it. I'm gonna end up with a lot of dressing here and I will eat this on everything. Um, I'll start there. See how we start someplace. I'm gonna add in some salt. So I'm gonna do a good big pinch. Now my big pinch like this, I've measured it and it's a quarter of a teaspoon. Wanna know how I know? How did I measure? I'm gonna give away all my secrets. 
Find the salt that you like to use, salt by hand. See what your forefinger pinch is. Put it in your palm. See what that looks like. What does that look like? Okay, that's what that looks like. And then go ahead and put it into a, um, in a measuring so that it's about a little bit over of a quarter of a teaspoon. People always are like, oh my gosh, you're adding so much salt. And I'm like, nope, not really. Not compared to like products that are shelf made. I know I have a lot of pepper, but I'm not a different one. These are all different notes of pepper. Um, now, this isn't gonna be thin enough. That yogurt's really, really creamy. So for me, there's a couple different ways to thin it out. You could add some water, you could add some milk. Um, I have been known to add half and half. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I'm desperate, I, you know, I've got some sort of other dairy product around and I like to try and also keep buttermilk. So this is just Kate's real buttermilk. Again, it lasts forever. It's a soured product. And so I'll use a little bit of this just to thin out. It's a buttermilk ranch, right? Keep some buttermilk around. Um, there's lots of ways to use it. Um, and so that's where I'm going to start. So that's what I've got in here. I'm gonna find my lid and I'm just gonna get my little machine here. I'm gonna mute this first. Well, um, so then I just, I wanna blend it all together and I wanna get it to super chop. It's gonna get loud. So I'm gonna just hit um, mute for a second so we don't have to listen to this machine. So you'll notice one of the things I'm doing is I'm actually shaking my machine. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Like it doesn't, I don't have enough liquid in here. So it's, it's having a hard time like mixing all this stuff. So what can you do? I could add in some vinegar. I've got this herbal vinegar. Add a little bit of liquid that way. Again, I could add in more buttermilk. I could add in more oil, but I already have this dairy um, in here. Um, that uh, I love, um, and that's gonna give me the mouth feel that I want. Um, but you could add in um, olive oil. So I'm gonna add in a little bit more buttermilk and just see if I can't get this to go. But you'll see me shaking it, that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get it to like mix around. All right, I'm gonna hit mute because it's a very loud machine. And you could see it just kind of bubbled up real fast once I add a little bit more liquid in there. So now I want to taste it, taste what you've made and then decide, you know, do I need to add, what do I need to add more of? Does it need more salt? Does it need more, um, is it too bitter? Is it too, too vinegary? You know, um, there's, there are ways to solve all of those issues. If it's too salty, then you have to add more of everything else. I like it. It's not thick enough for me. This is, it's very, very thin. I don't know if you can see how, um, so I guess it's better down here, how very um, thin that is. So I'm gonna add in a whole bunch more Levna. I'm just gonna finish off my container. Like I said, I, I'll use this to dip my pizza crusts in. I'll use it for everything. So I use it instead of ranch dressing. If you want it to taste more like ranch dressing, I have been known to buy a package of Hidden Valley Ranch, like the, you know, the dried spice mix <laughs> and just mix that into my Lebna. And then I kind of get that flavor, um, which is, you know, the flavor of, of my childhood. Um, but my parents never bought that. I, I think I, I had it everywhere else but home. Um, 
Anyways, uh, that's one way to do if you really want that particular spice, um, that proprietary spice mix. But you can use dried spices, dried garlic, um, salt, onion salt, etc. All right, I'm going to just hit this on the blender again really quickly. So again, I'll hit mute. I'll unmute and all right, put that one in my mouth already. I'm not in company, I don't want to double dip. Um, but now I've got this, you know, it's very, it's nice and good. It's coating the back of the spoon. You can see that, how it coats the back of that spoon really nicely. Yes, um, I love this suggestion. You can use kale, Swiss, put lettuce in there, actually. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more. I taste, I can taste the oregano a lot. You can go ahead and add in some of the very lettuce from your, your garden. Um, any green that you can think of, put it in there. Um, and then just keep playing with the flavor profiles. So I'm going to add a little bit more. You just inspired me. I also forgot I had some green onions that are starting to look a little sad. So Let's add those in there. I'm gonna cut off the little um, hairs. I don't like once I, I take off anything that looks super floppy. It's kind of the, the rule there. Um, and then I'm gonna help the blender out just a little bit, cut these into some segments. This will give me some more oniony flavor. I have that shallot in there, but this will be a different onion profile. It also needs some salt, I can tell you that. I've added all this stuff. I need more salt. You should be able to, um, you should be able to taste the food. It should um, really like, it should feel uh, nice and bright, but you shouldn't be able to taste the salt. So you want to salt until you can taste it. So now I know, um, like I'm used to doing this. So um, I know that no matter what, like I can just keep playing with it and tweaking it. And I'm gonna end up with a dressing that I like, that is nice, that is good. Um, but I, I completely respect that price of food is very expensive right now. And you may not be as free to play with things if you're not used to it. Um, you know, start with a small amount. You don't need to make a whole container full. It actually gets bigger as you keep adding stuff. Um, but, you know, you can buy a small container, like a single serving of Greek yogurt and play around a little bit and just see the feel. You very quickly will just start adding all sorts of stuff. It only takes maybe a couple leaves of lettuce, a little bit of parsley, um, and especially what you can find outside is um, if you have a garden, you know. Um, just make sure that whatever it is, if you like to forage or is that they are actually edible um, and that they are not poisonous. So no rhubarb leaves or anything like that. But um, so this is, and again, you can just kind of keep playing and adding um, more garlic or salt or whatever. Mm. Now I've got a creamy dressing. It's super herby. I've got a lot of good nutrients in here. And it took me really about, you know, it, it only took me longer because I was talking. <laughs> so probably about five minutes. And I do have to, you know, do a dish or two, but um, not too bad. Very, very cost effective. So this is a creamy dressing. There are lots of other ones like blue cheese or, um, you know, ranch is a probably, usually there's a combination of, of sour cream and um, buttermilk for ranch, right? So same thing, I've got buttermilk, I'm using Lebna. Um, blue cheese, you use, uh, you could add, uh, oh, you could add Parmesan into this um, and make it kind of a Parmesan herb. Um, 
blue cheese, let me get to that, is blue cheese, uh, uh, buttermilk, usually sour cream. So Lebna or Greek yogurt would work. Um, and then you use some white vinegar and, um, you know, you can quickly Google a recipe and just see what it is and then play with the amounts. You don't have to make a ton. Um, I think they've got like garlic, fresh garlic or garlic powder, but Easy way to get to, you know, roasted garlic. If you are into roasting garlic and sort of fresh garlic um, and, the, and the flavors will, you can use roasted garlic. They'll give that like um, kind of more caramelized, deep flavor. Um, and then remember as this sits, those flavors are going to meld even more. So they're going to really start to develop a bit. This, because it's made with yogurt, and there's some vinegar in it, it actually will last a pretty long time. Um, and so, but anytime you put something in your refrigerator, you should label it. I did not do that here, <laughs> um, but with the time and date, but dressings will last a really long time without all those shelf, shelf preservatives. Um, those shelf preservatives and things are meant to keep it on a shelf at room temperature, like, and stabilized that way. Um, you keep this in your refrigerator. You've got a good couple weeks out of it for sure. And if you're not sure, um, you know, compost it. But usually like once I see it growing other food, then I know that it's probably not okay anymore. But always, you know, you can always take a little tiny taste and um, you're not gonna hurt yourself. So that is my, um, my kind of back pocket creamy, um, herb dressing. I'm gonna put that up here. And back to this one that I took out of the refrigerator at 1220. So now I can actually um, I'll take it down here. You know, that you can start to see it's becoming more liquidy. And actually, if I just give it a shake, this was the one that was in my refrigerator. If I give it a shake, there we go. I've got, it's all shook up. And the dressing is, it's good to go got a little bit of a chill on it so the the oil's a little still a little thick um, because of the chill so um, you know if you give yourself a half hour and pull it out or again you can zap it in the microwave very very quickly other additives to these kinds of dressings tahini is a great one um, I love to do like tahini and oil, olive oil and lemon juice think about hummus without the chickpeas right um, tahini, peanut butter, or sunflower butter, those you can thin out with a little bit of hot water to make them um, um, more, um, well, to thin them out. So it makes them more pliable. Um, so, so a really great way to, to do that is hot water. Um, and those make fantastic dressings. Um, tahini, which is sesame seed paste, is really good, especially on like sweet potatoes and chicken. And um, it just has that, that really pleasant flavor. So, you know, once you start to get into making your own dressings, the, the sky's the limit. And you can just, you have probably already in your refrigerator, everything that you need. It's just a little bit of imagination. Um, all right, the last one I wanna show you is Caesar salad. And again, I'm gonna show you kind of again, a quick shortcut method for Caesar salad. Now this one is, um, so I'm gonna pull over a couple of ingredients. Now I'm not gonna use a raw egg yolk in this Caesar salad. That's why it's sort of more of the short, quick method. And um, I'm not gonna use that guy. I do like to make mine in a mortar and pestle, and I'm just gonna make a very little tiny bit. So I'm just using a small mortar and pestle here. And I'm gonna start with one clove of garlic. And I'm just gonna pick a small one because I got just a small dish here. And um, what I like to do is add a little bit of salt. Now I'm not gonna add a lot because I have a lot of salty ingredients in Caesar salad, probably too much, but um, so, but really what the salt does is it gives us a um, um, base, um, 
it gives some grit to help mash the garlic. And so what I'm gonna do is just mash the garlic. These little mortar and pestles, we actually sell here at the co-op. I think they're like $8. I have one at home, it's bigger, I love it. Again, finding ones that just bring you joy. And there's something about kind of mashing garlic that just feels very, um, um, I just feel more connected. I don't know, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, so. There, so I'm mashing my garlic and see really quickly it becomes a paste. It didn't take any time at all. Now, along with little tiny whisks, I always keep around some little tiny spatulas. See, it's about the size of my thumb. Um, and so I can just use that if I need. These are just, there's a lot of kitchen tools out there, but having some small, like this is good for getting into jars and whatnot. So now you have your choice. You can either use real anchovies, and I like these ones that come in a jar. The ones that come in a tin drive me crazy because then I have to deal with the ones I don't use and the oil. So I pay a little bit more. These are over in the specialty cheese shop. I get the ones in a tin. They last forever because, again, they have been preserved in salt, which is why they're so salty, and oil. So you can pull out a, a real anchovy like this, or the other shortcut is to get some anchovy paste. And this is anchovies. It's just been already mashed up into a paste. And I forget the exact equivalent. I think it's like one teaspoon is like three anchovies. Again, I don't measure. I just squeeze a little bit in there, maybe. Um, try to squeeze, try to keep the air out of these. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm gonna squeeze them out. Before it's before it blows up into my face, I might have to just there we go. Get <laughs> that little air pocket that was in there. Um, so I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of anchovy paste. It's already mushed up for ya. Um, people like Caesar salad dressing because it tastes like anchovies. <laughs> That's the flavor profile. If you are, um, if you don't eat fish or have an allergy, there are some really good um, recipes for for anchovyless Caesar salad dressing out there. Um, I don't have them with me today. So, and again, I can just if you're doing a whole fish, you would mash it up a bit more. But I'm just going to mix these two together. Okay, and then. So, and now I'm, I'm kind of done with the, um, the uh, pestle here. I don't need to do any more mashing. So I'm just gonna put it off to the side and I, I'm just gonna finish building my, my dressing right here in this, the bowl here, okay? So now I've got, um, now we start to add in some of the other ingredients that you find. And um, there is, Dijon vinaigrette or Dijon mustard. Now I don't want to make a lot of dressing, so I'm just going to use a little bit. I'm going to use probably about a quarter of a teaspoon or so just to start. Very little tiny bit. This is a dressing that you should want to use within three to five days. Okay. Um, I'm going to get some Worcestershire sauce, which is in my cabinet. Excuse me, set for one second. And Worcestershire sauce, this is some good umami. I'm going to give a dash or two, probably about, usually about half a teaspoon or so, but it's just up to you. So I'm just going to put some in there. Um, I already have salt. And then I do use mayonnaise. Now I'm going to use mayonnaise in this because I'm not using any egg. And um, my best friend actually brought me a, um, and the mayonnaise is probably about three times or so what you, what you did. I'm going to put in a whole, depending how creamy you want it. If you don't want it creamy, don't use any mayonnaise. Um, my best friend actually made a Caesar dressing um, that she found that she really likes because it uses hard boiled eggs. 
And so it uses the, the yolk of a hard boiled egg. So again, you're not worried about raw egg being in it. Um, the main reason about being worried about raw egg is mostly um, that it can just go bad. So, all right, so I have mayonnaise, I've got mustard, I've got Worcestershire sauce, garlic, anchovies. I'm gonna put in a dash or two of, you can use red wine vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar, it doesn't matter. And there's a bunch of different, again, recipes out there, and they will all be slightly different. And so some people use vinegar. A lot of times you'll see fresh lemon juice. I may put in both. We'll see where we end up here. I don't think actually I use vinegar very often. I think I just go with lemon juice. And some olive oil. Maybe. If I have any left in this container. <laughs> Now the oils, what they do is they help carry flavor. They help coat stuff, which is why um, vinegars will just fall off of everything. So the oils help to, and then we're just gonna whisk it all together. See my little whisk is nice and handy. Again, this might be just getting it to emulsify. Mix a little bit. I'm getting it nice and whisked together. I want to I want to add some black pepper into mine. I like black pepper. Gives it a base note. So we have a lot of um, acidic. We have a lot of salty ingredients as well. And then I want to taste it. I'm just going to use this fork. And now, oh, I know what I'm missing. One of the ingredients I like to put into mine which is another salty ingredient, but also fat, is some fresh cheese. And this is some Pecorino Romano that I happen to have. You can use Parmesan. So I'm just gonna take my little cheese grater and add it into there. This is also gonna give my Caesar dressing a little bit more body, right? Because the I've just got some fresh grated cheese and I didn't do a lot. I save a lot of the cheese for on top of the salad. I'm gonna mix it in. And like now I've, and I don't have a ton here. I've got maybe like a fourth of a cup of dressing. And that's great. I don't need a lot. Okay. So move all these out of the way. Now when tasting your dressings, one of the things that you also want to do is taste it with the lettuce or what, you know, use a vehicle that you are going to be um, serving it with. So it's great to taste it on a spoon, but what is it, how does it mix with um, the lettuce that you're actually using? So I'm going to use a little piece of romaine, just dip it in slightly. It's probably a little bit more than I would have on the um, because uh, we'll talk about how to dress a salad in just a second, but this will give me a better taste, a better idea of how the dressing actually tastes. Mm. Mine's definitely a little vinegary, um, a little sharp. I like that. I'm gonna add in a little bit more Worcestershire sauce. Actually, no, I wanna add in more anchovy. I like the anchovy flavor. And this is what's nice about the paste and that I just squeezed a whole bunch in there. <laughs> Oops, I just moved my whisk. Get that back. I like, a, you know, to taste very, I'm gonna bring out that anchovy flavor a lot. All right, now I'll try it again. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, last but not least, um, I'm going to just show you the best way to actually dress a salad is you don't want to do it uh, um, too far ahead of time because it'll make, as if you're doing a green salad, it'll make everything wilt. So you can make your dressings and let them sit. Those are something you can do ahead of time. Um, the flavors will continue to develop then they will um, meld a little bit better. Um, but if once you are ready, I'm gonna grab a bowl. 
especially if you're doing something like a Caesar salad, um, you want to, you know, we have this tendency to pour dressing on top. If you can, excuse me, I'm gonna grab some tongs, put your dressing in the bottom of the bowl and use less than you think you need. It spreads, spend a little bit of time. So what do I mean? I'm gonna take my Caesar dressing and I'm gonna put it right in the bottom of this bowl, just like that. It's only probably a couple tablespoons worth, right? All right, we have these very super cute little heads of romaine lettuce right now, um, which I've already washed and dried. I kept it whole. Caesar salads, especially you wanna, you wanna pair by hand. Um, and so, and you want your salad to be dry or else that oil, uh, your dressing won't stick to it. So try to make sure that you get your leaves really dry. Salad spinners. Um, because remember, oil and vinegar or oil and water don't mix. It just makes your wheat leaves really slippery. So I'm just hand ripping all of this into a bowl. This is my lunch, everyone. Like there's just the cutest little heads right now. And they're perfect, like one large lunch salad size, or maybe salad for two. And then I'm gonna take my tongs and then I toss it like this. And I just lift them up. And it doesn't take very long before everything gets, starts to get coated. Really move it around. And if people need more dressing, because you have folks that like a lot, serve the extra on the side. This is, I probably have a little too much in here. Eh, maybe not too much. Um, you want your, your greens to be lightly coated, but not sopping wet. Um, I find in a lot of restaurants, they just, they do it way too heavy. So I probably have just on the edge of having a little too much. But you can see how quickly it gets uh, um, coated. And then you can put it into whatever beautiful, um, if you have a salad bowl, you can do it right in your salad bowl. And then maybe with the Caesar, um, you can add more cheese to the top. You can add your croutons, um, add your chicken or grilled vegetables or grilled fish, whatever, however you're doing it. So I can put my extra cheese right on top. A little pepper, very disgust, I like my pepper. And there you go. All right. So we went through, I wanna show you also really quickly that vinaigrette, if you don't believe that, that, that there was an emulsifier, you can see here in the jar, you can see the lines of separation, the oil and then the like vinegar and the emulsifier, it'll hold things together for about 20 minutes. And if this happens, all you do is give it a shake. Now, if this was just oil and vinegar, they would immediately separate. But because I have an emulsifier in there, they're gonna hold together for you know just a little bit of time. This is the other reason um, it's nice to have it in a jar um, because that has a lid. So if you take it to the table, people can remix it um, and not get dressing everywhere. But so what I'm gonna do is um, for, for those that have joined me, I'm gonna end the recording here um, and then I'll take, we can, we can chat so we're not, um, so right now, first of all, thank you CATV and anyone that's joining us that way. And um, we will be doing about six more other videos, six other videos throughout the summer that we're, we'll cover different topics. So hope that you come back to our channel and uh, thank you so much. Everyone else just stay.